In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to initialize and set up a Mr. Vista session. So to begin with, I have navigated to the MATLAB directory that has our Mr. Session .mat file in it. And to get started, I'm going to go to my command window and type MLR. And that's going to open up an in-plane window. The first thing that you might want to do is adjust the size of this window um, and play with the contrast uh, until it looks, um, it looks good and you're happy with it. And if you go to File, you can click on Save Preferences um, so that you're not going to have to adjust that every time. The first thing that I'm going to show you is the data type menu, which is up in the upper right hand corner. If you click on that, um, you'll have a number of data types. To start off, you'll probably only have one or two. So I had original and SSTC filter moco, um, which is my slice scan time corrected and motion corrected data. So this is the data that you're probably going to want to start working on. So I'm just going to select that. And you want to do some basic checks to make sure that your data was processed correctly before you move on to try to analyze it. So if you go up to edit, um, click on data type and go to edit data type. And it's going to bring up this dialogue. Um, and there are a couple of things that you just want to check. So description, you may need to change this um, depending on how your data was pre-processed. This might be a whole path name. Um, so you might just want to simplify it to appropriately name your scans. Number of temporal frames. Um, make sure that that matches up with the no appropriate number of frames for your scan, uh, as well as the frame interval um, in seconds, which um, is your repetition time. <clears throat> so just click through all of your scans and make sure that those parameters are correct before you move on. Okay, so the next thing that you're going to want to do uh, is clip any dummy frames from your T-series if you have them. So if you go up to analysis and then go to time series Go all the way down and you'll see uh, clip frames from T-Series and just click on that and then you'll have to choose which scans you want to clip frames from. So you can do multiple scans at once if they have the same number of temporal frames and you need to clip the same number of frames from the same place. Uh, otherwise it's not going to work so you might have to do each scan type individually. Uh, but in my case, my bow tie and ring scans are all the same. So I'm going to select them all, click OK, and then it's going to ask you to skip how many frames from the start of each scan. So this is if you are wanting to click frames from the beginning, which I do, and I want to click four. So I'm just going to put in four. And then it says keep how many subsequent frames. And I want to keep the rest, so I'm going to keep 120. But say, for example, I also wanted to click four frames from the end of my T-series, then I would simply change that to 116, and it will click the last four as well. Okay, so um, you can see that's done clipping the T-series. So at this point, I am going to move those scans um, from here into another data type to start working on them. So to do that, I'm going to go to Edit, Data Type, and I can choose to either duplicate the current data type and copy across every single scan, or select only a subset to analyze, and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go group scans into data types, and I'll do my rings. And I'm going to want to create a new data type. 
So just give that a name, rings, okay. And it's going to copy the TCs across to a new data type. All right, and that has created a new data type. We can go to our drop down menu and we'll see that that is there. So if I go back to edit data type and edit data type, you can now see that the number of temporal frames is only 120 because um, we clipped the first four. So just double check that that, you can just double check that that worked um, in here. So now I'm going to run an FFT analysis on this rings data. Uh, by going up to analysis, traveling wave analysis, and compute core now. Um, and again, you have the option of doing it for all the scans, the current scan, or choosing which scans you want to do it for. So I'll just do it for both of them. Once that's complete, we can view the results of that analysis by going to view and clicking on phase map. Um, <clears throat> now it's calculated an FFT for every single part of the image, including um, where there's no data uh, that we're interested in. So if you go over to code thresh um, in, up on the right hand, upper right hand corner, you can just turn that up and it'll get out a lot of the noise and you can have a look. Um, if you click through your slices, um, you can see the results of that. So that's looking reasonable enough. What I'm going to do now is average both of these rings scan together. So I'm going to make sure that I'm in the data type that I want, go to analysis, time series, and click on average T series. I'm going to select both of those. Um, this has got name of new data type. So it will just create another data type called averages, and then you want to name it, uh, the annotation for average scan, uh, to whatever name is appropriate. And once that's done, you can go to your data type, click on averages, and I already averaged my bow ties together, so I've got that there, but if we click across to the second scan, we've now got a rings average. And I'm going to want to compute an FFT for this as well. So I'm going to do what we did before, go to analysis, traveling wave analysis, compute coronal, and this time I'm just going to do it for the current scan. So this is whichever scan um, you're sitting on. and view that by going to view and clicking on phase map. And now we can see the results of our average. Um, and I can also see the results of my bow ties by just clicking through them. Okay, so at this point, we will want to transform this data into gray space, which in our lab is where we do most of our uh, analysis and working with the data. So to get that up, go to Window and click on Open Gray 3 View Window. In order for this to work, you're going to have to have your alignment completed. So if you haven't done that um, and you don't know how, there is another video on this channel that explains how to do that. Um, so once that opens, it's going to prompt you to select an anatomy file, which I've already done, but it will just bring up a window and you're just going to select your T1 anatomy for this subject. And it will ask you for the number of gray layers. Now this is going to depend on the resolution of your data as to how many layers you want it to build on top of uh, your um, class segmentation, your white matter segmentation. So this data is at one millimeter resolution, so five, um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, if you're working with 1.5 mil data, you might only want to have three gray layers, but it just depends. 
And then it's going to ask you to select a hemisphere or class file. So this is your segmentation. I'm just going to change that to nifty and open the segmentation and put in the same number of gray layers as you did last time. And that's going to install the segmentation. So once that's done, you can just click in these windows to get your anatomy up. The first thing that you're going to need to do is transform your T-series from in-plane space into gray space. So to do that, you need to be in the same data type in your in-plane and your gray window. So to make this easier, I'm just going to skip straight ahead to transforming the averages. And go to X-Form, in-plane to volume and T-series. And again, you can choose to do all of them, just your current scan or select a subset of scans. Uh, I'm going to just transform the current one to make it a bit quicker. Um, so you want to select trilinear interpolation. Uh, once that's transformed, you can compute the FFT analysis again in gray or you can transform it from in-plane by going back to X-Form, in-plane to volume, um, and transforming your Coronel. But I like to calculate it again in in-plane, so I'm just going to do that the exact same way we did before. Okay. <clears throat> and we can view that by going to view and clicking on phase map. Turn up our threshold. Okay, so now this time you can see that the data is restricted to just the gray matter um, as defined by your segmentation and the number of layers that you put in. And we don't have all of the, um, all the data from, from anywhere else. Uh, at that point, once you've transformed all of your data across, um, you can start uh, building surface meshes um, and putting the data onto the mesh and having a look at it. But in terms of just setting up your Vista session, uh, this is pretty much um, all you need to do to kind of get started and be working on your data. So I hope you found this video useful and um, please let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to try and, and answer them for you.